As per the survey by Znet and Truelist, 96.3% of the world's top 1 million web servers run on Linux. How did Linux become so popular? How an operating system that started as a hobby project became a king that no one in tech industry could ignore, not even Microsoft. When talking about Linux, the first person who comes to our mind is Linus Torvalds. We know him as the creator of Linux kernel and lead developer behind it. But there's one person who often doesn't get enough limelight and credit for starting the moment that made Linux what it is today. Meet Richard Matthew Stallman, also known as RMS. RMS joined the MIT Artificial Intelligence Lab in 1971 as a software developer, contributing to the operating system development at MIT Lab. In one of his interviews, RMS defines the MIT Artificial Intelligence Lab as a thriving community of hackers and people who loved programming. But then something went wrong. What came next is defined as the beginning of the end of freedom by RMS. The computers at MIT at that time did not have passwords. The programmers had purposely designed the operating system without passwords because they realized that passwords were a way for administrators to control the users. But administrators eventually started forcing passwords on users which did not go well with RMS. He just did not like it. RMS figured out a way to decode the passwords and messaged all the users and the message contained the decoded passwords that the users were using. At this time, he encouraged them to use enter keystroke as a password instead of using passwords to ensure systems remained open to everyone and implicitly telling the users that security was just a joke anyway. In another instance, RMS wanted to work on software to fix some bugs but the software source code was locked and he could not work on it. Even though it would have been in the favor of the company that owned the software to let RMS fix the bugs, they did not grant him access to the source code. A bunch of such experiences soured RMS to the idea of commercial software. This put him in a moral dilemma because in those days to get a modern computer, you would need to get a proprietary operating system. This created a barrier for people to do constructive things as the cost and contracts associated with owning a computer were very high. RMS then decided to create a new community called the Free Software Foundation. In 1984, he resigned from his job at MIT and started working on the GNU operating system. The word GNU is a hack itself as it's a recursive acronym which stands for GNU's not Unix. This is because RMS was trying to develop an operating system like Unix but not Unix. Unix consisted of many programs that communicated with each other so the GNU project started as an initiative to replace these proprietary programs one by one. This included programs such as C compiler, a debugger, a text editor to write code, a mailer, a text formatter, etc. By 1990, RMS and his team were almost done replacing these packages. The GNU team had the entire toolkit ready but needed a kernel. A kernel is the most crucial component of the operating system that manages system resources. The kernel directly interacts with computer's hardware and allocates hardware resources to applications that run on a computer. He was using SunOS, a Unix-based operating system at Helsinki University and wanted something similar for his personal use. Linus used the tools created by the GNU team to write his own kernel which was named as Linux. While RMS and his team worked on a kernel based on microkernel architecture, Linus used the traditional monolith approach and could develop a kernel much quicker than the GNU team. During its initial years, Linux was still an operating system mainly used by enthusiasts, but something was about to change. For Linux to grow out of the world of enthusiasts and to be adopted by businesses, it needed a real-world use that would make it a must-have technology. The threshold was crossed in 1995 with the development of Apache Web Server. Since internet adoption was increasing, this became a significant turning point in the history of Linux. Apache was the first application that gave businesses some tangible benefit from using Linux. Now with Linux, when you were out to build a server farm using Linux and Apache, it was much more cost effective than building one using Windows NT and its expensive hardware. This fueled the adoption of Linux because of the internet boom. It made sense for large corporations, internet service providers and budding e-commerce companies to run their applications using Linux to save costs. Linux has been unstoppable ever since due to its high penetration in data centers and mobile operating systems and also being the foundation of many open source technologies.